golden demon is back. Do not aim for a trophy. Literally just go, I'm painting something the best I can, and that's the most important thing to me. It wasn't this scary thing that I was worried it was going to be in my head. Ultimately, in the moment, you've just got to realize that you've done all you can do. Whenever I sit down to paint a competition piece, I always end up painting better than I thought I could. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paint Perspective episode 70. This episode, we're going to be talking about all things competition, painting. Golden Demon is, of course, on the horizon. Uh, James is going to be talking about his entries. We're going to go for our usual segments, listeners' comments, all that good stuff. Uh, but first, James, we had a little bit of, a, of an announcement this week. Most certainly do. Uh, Iron Skull is back, baby. It's back, finally. <laughs> um, I have been waiting for this day for quite some time. Uh, in fact, we've got a trailer that you can watch. Iron Skull is coming back in 2025, even bigger and better than ever before. The hugely successful debut of Iron Skull was held in February of 2020, which showcased miniatures from over 350 entrants traveling from all around the world. Iron Skull was rooted in an ambitious idea to create a competition for the miniature painting community. Its aim is to reduce all barriers for anyone wanting to start their journey in the competitive painting scene. Since the first Iron Skull, we are continually asked when the competition will return, and that time is now. So this is the Brentwood Centre. This is where Iron Skull is going to be held on Saturday, June 7th, 2025. And it is an absolutely vast space that we're going to be able to do all the things that we want to do at Iron Skull on the day. And we're also going to have public entry. So if you want to come down and have a look at all the fantastic miniatures in the different categories, you can come down and have a fantastic experience. So here's everything you need to know about Iron Skull 2025. Every category at Iron Skull will have a bronze, silver and gold award. On top of that, the best in show will also have the Iron Skull trophy. Along with that, we have Warboot, which is a massive wargaming boot sale with loads of independent traders, with loads of bargains and things for you to check out. We also have loads of retailers that are gonna have their own independent stands, selling their products and services with lots of things for you to check out. On top of that, we're also gonna have caterers, food. There's also gonna be some classes and some demos going so you can check those out and learn a bit from us. We're incredibly excited to bring back Iron Skull in 2025. To find out more and book your tickets now, head to ironskull.co.uk. We look forward to seeing you at the competition. Right, well, there we go. Very exciting stuff. I am so excited. I'm like Ace Ventura on like steroids. Yeah, like I am so, detective. I am so, so, so excited. Mm. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, uh, four years. Uh, we held it, obviously, the, uh, the debut event in 2020. And um, obviously, we all know what happened just after February of 2020. The world yeah. descended into chaos for a couple of years. The world got sick. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't the right time. To, we, tr we, we did try to, to, uh, to sort of run it uh, years <laughs> afterwards. But there was a couple of things, unfortunately, just regarding sort of venues and things that didn't work out, which was really frustrating for, 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 for us as a company and, and for me as wanting to run and grow the event. Um, and... Obviously, Siege has been very busy. Like It's just never been the right time over the, the uh, post-pandemic. It's never been the right opportunity mm. to do it. Um, and obviously, the industry's grown quite considerably since then. So like, I, I think waiting for the right time to bring it back was the right thing to do so we could do it as best as possible. And, and all cards on table, I, I genuinely want this to be uh, an annual thing that, that we do and give back to the community with an event that you can look forward to and you can see you meet with your friends and there's lots of things to do there. It's something that I'm very, very keen on sort of bringing, bringing back. After seeing the the venue when we filmed that that trailer video, yeah, it, uh, like made it real, like walking into yeah. the hall, I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. space, because yeah. obviously yeah, we've been space. talking about it for so long and it's returned, and, but uh, mm. yeah, it's like it's happening. Yeah, it's I happening. am. I am so so keen now. Now the uh, the job of get, getting everything sort of finalised is uh, is obviously on, which is which is great, you know. And like I said, I'm, I'm always keen to do new projects and stuff. Um, on top of the myriad of crazy crazy stuff we have to do anyway, but. But um, but yeah, no, really, really keen to um, to 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 sort of bring it back and uh, and sort of like categories have changed slightly. So we've just updated the categories from the first year. Just done a couple of things. Had a lot of feedback from sort of like people who entered. It feels more polished this yeah. time around. Yeah, I definitely. Think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the, the, even though we had quite a, a decent amount in 2019 uh, to organise it, like a time. Um, this one, obviously, with like a eight nine month lead up, I think is gonna is gonna really sort of like be way way better for lots of reasons. Obviously, venue, uh, just the process of like doing entries and uh, all the the things that are on the back end of it, um, as, as well as the categories as well. Like I think there was a thing, obviously, a little bit of confusion uh, like with like the word scale in the categories previously, and we wanted to sort of like eliminate that and just obviously make it quite clear uh, what type of models go in what category. So there was that. 
Um, and also, I think one of the things that for me is really important is make the event uh, as diverse in the sense of miniatures that can be there. I think obviously, mm. um, you know, the company that we are, we paint a lot of, of GW models and that's, that's we love that. Um, however, I want I didn't want there to be. I think the grand thing with Iron Skull is that, as, as, as you probably saw in the, in the launch trailer anyway, is that we want to make it so that if you paint Star Wars Legion, if you paint Bolt Action, if you paint Malifaux, if you paint Infinity, if you paint any of these game systems, like there is a category that you can enter a miniature from that game system and take part in the competition. Yeah. Um, the same thing with historicals as well, which uh, historicals obviously is, is another demographic of, of gamers and painters. Um, and, and we wanted the categories to also overlap that as well. So it is science fiction, it is fantasy, it is historicals. There's, there's a category for you, no matter what you paint or collect or, or want to present, there is something there for you. And I think that's one of the most important things for me that I really wanted Iron Skull to kind of bring to the table. Yeah, I think it's exciting as well. Like if, if you want to see any more details, obviously go to the website, ironskull.co.uk. But as like a contestant myself, so to speak, someone who's entered painting competitions and whatnot, I really like how everything's in one place. It's all on the website. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everything's clear, all the category lists. I think it's like accessibility for this, Yeah, I think is like a big push forward in terms of how other competitions are dealt with. What about like a, like a young bloods competition? Uh, Category. Is there a category for beginners? There's or? junior, yeah. So there's junior category. Yeah. And, the, and the thing is with, with junior as well, what we've tried to do is essentially make it so the category, um, you can enter a single figure, like a 28 mm. mil or like just a character, or if you want to, you can enter a vehicle or you can enter a month. Like I think the, the the future of the hobby and the future of painting, like miniature painting is is really close to my heart and, and what, what Siege is all about in the sense of obviously developing and training team and et cetera and all those kind of things. And I think that having a category that l makes the entry restrictions as open as possible um, so that someone can enter it, a, a youngster can enter it without any reservation. And that kind of leads, yeah, leads me on to like the other part of it. Again, in the trade I mentioned about obviously from teaching classes and all different people I spoke to at events or like one-to-one -one tuition, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of reservation, like the word competition, I potentially like might, might scare people and like they think, oh, I'm not good enough, all that kind of mm. stuff. Like, but I always dial it back to like, it's not even about winning a trophy. And I, I know that sounds really counterintuitive when it comes to a painting competition, but I think the ethos that I always try and, and kind of like present with Iron Skull and also when I talk to people about com competition painting is that like the simple fact that it puts you in the mindset of I need to paint the neatest, sharpest, smoothest, this thing that I'm painting for that has to be the best thing I've ever painted. Mm -hmm. Just that in itself means that you'll grow as a painter in what you present at the event. And then really, you know, this, the, 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 the victory that you get is bringing that thing that you're super proud of, that you, that is your best thing, hopefully to date. And you present that and the, and the event is a celebration of everyone's miniature painting. I think that's yeah. one of the things for me that's really important, like the, a trophy or an award or finalist commended, you know, or distinguished card, all those kind of things. I think like, Tracking your progress is obviously really important and like a, c a competitive environment will make you work harder and, and paint harder and be, be, you know, develop your painting. But the trophy or the award really in the grand scheme of things is the silver lining. And that's yeah. the one thing I'd always try and convey to somebody. And that's what I think the culture of Iron Skull is what I want to kind of like grow with it year to year. It's like, it's a celebration obviously of everyone's miniature painting, all the hard work and effort. Cause we all know sitting around this table, how much effort goes into painting miniatures, you know, yeah. um, you know, and, and, that's what the event is about. It's a celebration of that. But at the same time, this, the, the real goal for someone who maybe hasn't entered a competition before is literally to present the best thing they've ever painted. And that really, when you strip it right back, should be the mindset that I would recommend to anyone that's going to enter, that whether you've never painted a competition before. I don't want anyone who's watching this, you know, to ever have a reservation of entering. Like, I think that you should be able to present something that you're really proud of, irrelevant of where you are as a painter. It can mm. be the best thing that you've ever painted. And then if you do get a distinguished card or if you do get a make the first cut and get finalist, or if you do get a, you get commended or whatever, whatever you get, that's the, la the step on the ladder for your progress. And you can track that, which I think is really important. So yeah, yeah um, it, I, I really wanted to go over those parts because it's, it's something that I think that a lot of people from conversations they do get worried about competitions and like it's, it's i, I want to kind of like eradicate that that stigma of oh i'm not good enough you know yeah. I, 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 I don't like that well on that as well in terms of like value for attendees bear in mind as well it's not just about like your entry it's the inspiration of seeing yeah. all of that work and as well being in a room with so many like-minded painters exactly. and being able mm. to talk to each other about their entries and speak with you know perhaps painters that you've seen online that you like yeah. their work being able to have a chat with them or like with your friends and equally even if 
you don't want to enter or maybe you're afraid to enter like just going as as an attending because we have public entry tickets as well yeah. so if, if you want to just like maybe dip your toe and just maybe this year you just want to go and see it and hopefully get inspired and give you some ideas for maybe next year or something like that yeah i think it's, and there's going to be like cool stuff to do there as well obviously yeah. war boots going to be there yeah all the trader stands and whatnot we, we, so I, I, there's is, going to be lots to do which is exciting yeah, yeah i think that that's one of the big lessons i think we learned from 2020 and like we had some things to do there we you know we had a couple of people come over to like do demonstrations like anchor was there which was amazing to have him over um in, in 2020 and like we had obviously a couple of retailers and things like food on the site and stuff like i think that was one of the biggest things that's always frustrated me about competitions is like once you've released your 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 entry into the wild of the yeah. cabinets you know like it, it there is there, there is you know sometimes you, you you obviously catch up with your friends and the time pass etc but like you, you don't really have a lot to do and i think that's where like obviously warboot is something that i've been running for a couple of years now with, with sam from offworld and um and uh it's gone really well and obviously grown and got a good good, good sort of like reputation and name etc um having we've always wanted to do a summer one a big a big one and like where we are currently doing it uh barley lands that the, the car park is open open air so if it rains and it, it rains in june which it can do obviously here in the uk <laughs> mostly um, does, yeah it? which it can do <laughs> um uh, someone said actually on the on the comments of that video there was like oh, I could do this as like a holiday. What's the weather like in June in the UK? Mm, I saw And that. someone said, uh, well, it could be really, really hot or it could be really, really cold or, or it could rain. There could be thunderstorms. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the dice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that's the thing. Like, so, so it kind of, it, it kind of kills two birds with one stone, which is really good because like we get to do a the big summer war boot, which is what we want to do. Obviously, it'll be inside, so no rain uh, unless there's a plumbing error or something but uh, yeah the sprinklers go yeah. off um but um but yeah unless unless there's anything like that then then we'll get to do a really big war boot and again i love war boot because it, you get to see so much stuff that you maybe haven't seen for a long time or you might find mm. that book that you've always wanted or like you get to spend some money yeah, exactly yeah, I, you, <laughs> yeah. Get to, you, you get to get to sell james yeah, all I, of your stuff far <laughs> too busy surely on a day Look, spending I, any I will money i will be i will be definitely yeah. definitely i will have a bit of a peruse but yeah. um but yeah i'll be very busy on the day but but um but <laughs> but uh but but yeah, like so having war boot there is also really good. Um, we're gonna have loads of retailers as I mentioned. I mean, I, I'm not gonna confirm anyone yet. There are there are retailers which are in the process of confirming trader tables, and obviously yeah. through the through the eight nine month lead up that we're gonna have, mm. we're gonna be doing loads of announcements of all the people that are gonna be there, companies, you know, individuals that are coming to be there for the day, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you're interested in the like sort of behind the scenes of it all as well, I'd say stay tuned to the podcast because as a uh, as things get announced, things go on. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah. Be, uh, be good. This is sharing that with you. This is probably yeah the best first place. place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To find news out. flash. Yeah, news yeah. flash right news here. Flash. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's all going to be announced. Um. Obviously, we're not a revealing judges yet. That's going to be kept uh, kept for a while. So no flash. I'm a judge. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. We're we're basically going to be announcing loads of stuff over the next coming months in the lead up, and um, and really trying to put as much stuff in place to 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 motivate. Uh, you if you if you're sitting on the fence you know oh, i'm not too sure you know and if you are questioning your ability as a painter or whatever like i we i massively encourage and implore you to, to throw cautions at the wind and enter like nothing super negative is going to happen you're going to learn from the experience and you're going to have mm. a, a fantastic day seeing loads of amazing miniatures um and if you want to buy some stuff at warboot or from a retailer then there's always that as well we all yeah. like a bit of shopping so so um, is it, is it, there's going to be some food there and things as well as uh, yeah so there's uh, on well. on site uh cafe which is really great there's a nice. bar there as well so there's that Better. um you know and we're also, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're also we're also going to be uh going to be having a couple of out outside so outside the venue there's a nice area where we're going to have a couple of uh of other other sort of like catering uh, yeah. uh, uh catering companies as well so yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of lot of different things there which is great um and, and again we're still brainstorming lots of other things because i think one of the things that I'm having conversations again, you know, behind the scenes, I'm having conversations with various team members here at Siege, like, and I'll be having them with, with George and, and you, Paul, like about things that we can do at the event to make it as engaging as possible, so that if you if you've done your round of the cabinet, or if you've spent three hours by the cabinets or two hours by the cabinets, you can then break away and you'll have, you'll have yeah. lots of other things to do. I think that's one of the things that we're really keen to kind of make sure that that it's not a oh I've got to wait around for another two. I, I want to really eradicate that from from a painting competition. Yeah. On that on that note as well, like if the listeners, if you have any ideas for things like maybe you've been to a lot of competitions before and you have some like feedback on things you'd like to see or not see, let us know yeah. in the comments. Definitely. What about um, just as a, an idea about? What about face painting for kids? You get your face painting like a Nurgle prince? No. If you're sure. doing the face painting, no. Paul, then, then I'd be far too big. <laughs> 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 you love Nurgle. What are you on about? No. I think so, I think uh, <laughs> I think I think there'll be a there'll be a market for that. Little booth. Be, yeah. I know what the stand could be called. Go mental with face paint. It could be that yeah. could that could work quite well. Yeah. 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 Get your face Nurgled. Get your face Nurgled. I mean, there. Yeah. We'll, 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 work we'll, on we'll workshop on the title. Yeah. <laughs> we'll workshop the title. Yeah, yeah. Nurgle yeah. yourself. Nurgle yourself. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah. So I'm, I am so Confirm. excited because I, I I love. 
I love events and love competitions, uh, you know, from the years of doing it. And, and, and like, I just, I think, as I've said, I think it is the best environment to, to, if you're seriously keen about improving your painting, it's like the best environment to, 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 to do that, mm. you know, and if you get a trophy or get an award or get something, that's, that's the cherry on the cake, you know, I think, nod, it? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think the best thing is like just pushing yourself as a painter and then like your reward for all of your hard work in the month leading up to it. Yeah. You get to meet so many people. You get yeah. to see all the amazing work. You get to chat well, with your friends. One of the best things I, I, I like about competitions is perhaps not so much. But I have I've obviously done Golden Demon a few times in the past, a long time ago. But from but looking at all the other miniatures that have entered mm. and like one of my favorite things is sort of saying, how did he do that? Or how did they yeah. do that? If, I think if you can get that question from looking at a miniature, I think they've they've done I've done a good job because it gets you thinking. You think, how the, heck, how the heck did he do that? Well, that's the, that's and then the, the best thing. part is you get to go and ask him. I know. Where did you find them? Excuse me. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's 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 lots lots of things that we do want to do. Like as I said, like there's there's little things that I've picked up from many years of events that I want to put into Iron Skull to make the event as best as possible for participants for just general admission. Now, that, the general admission mm. is actually a big thing, like because I think a lot of competitions obviously you 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 obviously pay for an entry ticket if you're entering, yeah. and that's some of them that's that's some of them that are out there. That's that's the only real kind of like ticket that you can buy. And I think with Iron Skull, what I wanted to do is like if if you are sitting on the fence and maybe this year isn't the year for you to enter. Being able to get in and just walk around, obviously just, do, a bit, yeah. do some drop in, but then get to go by the cabinets and have a look around. I think that might. I think I'm quite confident. Not, not that, only that though, but like it's nice to be able to bring like a friend or a family member or yeah. a partner with you without yeah. having to like get them a ticket to enter. Yeah, so to speak. yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I think I think that that that's the you know, and and that's why we've done what we've done with the venue. Like the year one, obviously, like 2020, we had a venue just in in the middle of Shoreditch that we that we done, and and that was it was quite. Uh, I mean, we had good capacity. We had about 350 attendees, obviously from various different places in the world and stuff, which was great. Um, but there wasn't much scope for growth there, and subsequently that venue closed down anyway. But um, but we, what I wanted to do is bring it back way bigger, so that that way it's got room to grow within that environment, mm. and that is the plan. Like you know, um, didn't want to do it in London. A lot of the feedback from year, year one was that obviously London is very expensive, you know, yeah. in central London, hotels, travel, that kind of stuff. We're, the location is amazing because it's right near the M25. It's super close to most airports, like within an hour from most airports, which is great. There's quite a few hotels and places, obviously Airbnb, all that stuff around there as well. So it's really easy to find. Great size parking area mm. so you can park with uh, with extra spaces and stuff. So it's, it's really, it's the best venue and it's Essex. So like, I don't have to travel too far. Brent, so, it's, it's yeah, as well. yeah. so if you, yeah, you, don't, way, you, you, you don't have to get You're your going to meet some, some TOWIE <laughs> stars yeah, afterwards yeah, on the town. I am, I'm, 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 I'm not going to be getting any any cameo <laughs> yeah. TOWIE appearances yeah. at Iron Skull. If you're watching this, anyone from TOWIE, we're not going to do that. Then, uh, I, then, rumor uh, has it Gemma Collins is opening the event. Yeah, like cut the ribbon. Giving the awards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that isn't on the cards and there's going to be no teeth whitening at the event either but um, <laughs> but, um but yeah so tanning so, beds yeah, tanning, tanning beds yeah <laughs> so um so yeah it's in Brentwood which is great really ne next to M25 it, it, like, it's on it's on an artery roads like the M25 and also uh, the A12 so so it's it's really really great to get to sort of like find and get to um, and it, because it's just outside of London, it, you're kind of in a much sort of cheaper area as well, which is which is quite good for, yeah. for like just local amenities and like hotels and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. Well, uh, like I said, check all the info ironskull.co.uk. You can see all the event information and importantly, get your tickets now uh, before they sell out. Hopefully, as well. Yeah. Uh, details to come as and when. Stay tuned on the socials. We'll be announcing things on the podcast and whatnot. Uh, and I'm sure you'll be getting emails and stuff if you bought a ticket as well. So if you sign up to the Siege mailing list uh, and you do get our sort of like weekly mailers, uh, you'll get loads of information on there. Um, we'll put a link in the description to the mailer. Join up if, uh, if you want mm. to. And you get a free it. PDF as well if you're yes, on you yeah. mailing yeah. list. Yeah. Free PDF. Um, Tasty. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they released the Space Marine 2 board game because clearly GW heard us talking about it on the podcast and went, oh, I think Paul's right. We probably should release that over it's here. It's actually called, isn't it called the Recruit Edition? I think so, yeah. It's called the Recruit Yeah. I um I thought oh I might be able to get hold of one but um I I didn't I didn't manage to. Is get it hold on one. sale now then? No I, no it was on sale Saturday just gone. Right. So um I did manage to get in contact with one of the the, G the Games Workshop stores and ask them if they were getting something. They said yes, but by the time I got there, gone. they're all gone. Yeah. So, and it's actually they said well we don't know if we're ever going to get them ever again either. So yeah. that's right. that's the end of that. No. Well, it's so it. even we're not. Uh, Sad times for immune. me. I'm going to cry about it I, somewhere. I, I, I'm quite sure that due to the popular, I mean, we've all seen how popular the game has been. I think yeah. it's been absolutely crazy. Oh, it's got yeah. to come back, isn't yeah. it? Surely I, like, it'd be it, mental it, if they it didn't. It will come back. And it's like, crazy. Yeah, I think like 
there's so many people that probably want that have got into it that maybe just want to paint tighter. So I'm, I'm, I can probably envisage, and again, we don't know anything, but like you could probably envisage that that he might come out in, in on his own in the future potentially. Like I don't think with the costings of like molds and all those kind of things. Yeah. Not selling that as an individual model. Crazy. Yeah, but even you know, even as that board game, like if that board game goes out of stock, even if they choose not to release Titus separately, it would be bizarre if they didn't just continue to sell that board game. Right? I mean, I mean like, it's only a few. What is it? It's only a few Termagants. It's, I think it's like uh, fifteen Titans. Termagants. Yeah, Titus so or something like that. Forget about that. Forget GW. Forget about that. Just give us a Titus model in a little box. Brilliant. Job done. Confirmed. I mean, they've done the Ventress model, so like you never yeah. know. Like fingers okay. crossed. Like yeah, I think that Ventress came back because Ventress was supposed to be limited initially. I think so. Yeah, but it, it was. Very... Yeah, it was meant to be limited initially. Yeah. The and only Primaris with square feet. Just little fact there. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Not well, keen on it, I'll be honest, but yeah. I like it. Yeah. I think it's quite good. Titus model, five pound. Brilliant. Well done, GW. I, I I would be super. Five five, I don't think you're quite bad. Like, <laughs> you almost have me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe at Warboot. Maybe at Warboot. Yeah. At Warboot, that yeah, would yeah, be the place. Yeah, that would be well, the place. Be the place. Yeah. I, think, I, think I sat down at the, the weekend and think maybe I could just kit bash my own Titus. Well, you can. That's the thing. I know, like, it's, it's, I think that he's got enough detail on him that yeah. makes him unique, but not so much that but you it, couldn't convert it and make it look like him. And so, you just bung a helmet on him. Oh yeah, exactly. You don't need yeah, head, do you? So yeah. Helmets, helmets. A bit of chain around the wrist. Job done. That's like, it. You no, know? but um, but uh, but yeah. So if, if if he does come out, that'd be amazing. And um, and I think that the I, I mean, from what I've seen, the game again since my ill-fated single trip mission where I can barely mm. use a bolt gun, um, I, I have not played it anymore. Um, and uh, I'm very really, yeah, I know I'm gutted. You know, I really need to get. Uh, yeah, I've been so busy with other things, but um, I have seen. I've actually seen so many people getting into. Warhammer just as a result of mm -hmm. the game which I think is like absolutely amazing I think I touched on this last podcast didn't mm -hmm. we a couple of people were sort of asking me about it you know how, how do I get into Warhammer and so, well, I mean that, that board game would surely be say. the perfect gateway wouldn't it like yeah, I mean it's like I a guess, it's like a light of. version of but then you could see the thing is it's really it's, you've got that board game you've got the 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 random magazines that you can pick up I can't forget the name the combat I'm sure, I feel like I feel like the that, board game is nice though because it addresses directly the video game yeah rather than like the contents within it it's like this is the space marine thing you know yeah. it's the character it. you know yeah it's the enemy you, you know, know. Yeah. it's a small amount of stuff it's self-contained it's like it's everything in one box whereas yeah. like if you're like oh well you like space marine too well go and get yourself a combat patrol and then 20 or 30 paints and then these clippers like you yeah no up i get that i get go that. to the gw website and go Whoa. yeah I, I i thought it would be wider Product. I thought there'd be more of it, basically. Yes. Because, you know, I understand they. I think it was initially released in the states, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. 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 Target. It was a target. target yeah. Yeah. I think it came out way before the game. Right? It did. It yeah. Did, so. Like a year ago. Yeah. But that might be. I would speculate that that is due to the game getting delayed. It was. And maybe the board game was based on like initial maybe. release dates. I, I mean, you don't know. But the thing is, it. May, I understand why it was done in the states first because the, the states has got such a massive demographic. Of I people. don't. Do you not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why? Because the States is a massive demographic for the industry. Like there's a huge amount, like a huge amount of people that are into 40K and Warhammer. And it's been, and it's been in the UK for 40 years. Yeah, do you know where there's more than the US? The whole world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you got me beat there. I'll give you that one. Yeah. I don't um, see why we didn't get it at least at the same time. Yeah, just, I, I don't know. I don't but know. It could be it's like, crazy. Again, there's loads of reasons behind behind decisions. It was like a bit odd. The, know, the, but... the, issue, the issue is that like all good intentions, I'm sure. Yeah. All good strategy and good thought. Like, the problem is, it just results in Titus is going on eBay for crazy money. I, that's what yeah. I was just going to say. I know where I can pick up one yeah. on eBay for twelve grand, and I'm not going to. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that much. Well, no, say, he's, but... he's pretty spent. He's not as bad as I thought it would be based yeah. on some other releases. But but, but yeah. I think the thing is, just a thing like because of he the... is scalped pretty heavily. I'd well, imagine well, that there's a lot of Space Marine Two board games sans a Titus. Well, I tell you what, around. I feel sorry for all the poor little Termigans. All of yeah. them are out there going. No one wants us. Probably like, quite yeah. a good way to pick up some cheap Termigans. Yeah, yeah. Me to look for... silver lining. Yeah. Look for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyranny's mean... player. There you go. Hobby hack for the week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tyranny's are everywhere. They're on combat patrol. They're supposed to be Paul. They're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. True. But that's why yeah. we need Titus. Come on. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you can convert him, as we said. Like, and yeah, I think, I think that there's, there's lot. You can make Titus in the way that you want him to be, which I think is one of the most important things. And then I, I think what actually would have been really great is, is, is that, um, yeah, I mean, look, Adam's one, he converted it slightly, uh, you know, like. But that, even but, then, like, we, I mean, we spoke about this briefly on the previous episode, but that model 
in person looks so different. It does, it does. We always say this about models. The, like yeah. You see that you see that you see the, the the box art photo and it's a certain way and then you see it in the flesh and your opinion of it totally changes because it's I, you yeah. know like on that note actually I spoke about that on a Podger's new podcast. What? Uh coming up see absolute <laughs> heretic. What are you doing on a lot of people's podcasts? I'm a big deal now, Paul. People <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'll get my coat. Uh, sorry, all right, see you later. <laughs> Yeah, no jokes aside. We had we had a really cool conversation about that actually mm. uh, on an episode of his podcast. I'll link it in the description. I think it comes out this week uh, if you to, listen to the podcast. Is, so. I need to watch it when it goes. Yeah, out. yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, but, so um, uh, if it's if it's not out yet when this episode goes up, it's soon to be. I'll link it in the description as soon as it's uh, mm. soon as it's out. But yeah, we we're speaking about how media maybe doesn't always align with model yeah, design, true. and then people see the photos on Warcom, and then they all whinge about what they look like, and then they get their hands on the kit, yeah. and all of a sudden it's hush. I so. am uh, also available for other. Two YouTubers podcasts. I'm just putting that out. Here. What's your fee, Paul? Uh, one Titus miniature. One Titus miniature. <laughs> one Titus miniature. Pack of, pack of jammy Dodgers. Do. <laughs> uh, I, I agree with you on the jammy Dodgers. They're great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, look. I Ooh, think not a Titus fan. Okay. What? You said you agree with no, me. On I, like the Titus. I like the Titus model. I think it's great. I think it's really good. I said I like so Ultramarine. Sort of, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I like, I like Ooh, Ultramarines. No. I've never, I've never turned my nose off at Ultramarines. I think they're great. Mm. Great secondary good chapter. Like, you they're, know, they're, they're the second best. They're easily the second something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll leave that for people yeah, to answer that in the comments. Yeah. Have you a fight in the comments? Yeah. I mean, no, like I, I, I just think that like with that, it, it's it's unfortunate that the, it, it isn't accessible as, as obviously like a lot of people would hope it for it to be. Um, obviously there's other ways of making the model etc yeah. as we said but like give, um, give it give it time I think also, so I think that give like with anything like we, we see releases come back like I think they brought out third edition again they done that as a limited release a while ago or yeah, like, you know like, right. that, that, yeah, yeah. like that, that, Nothing, nothing's ever gone yeah like it, it will you know when they say when it's gone it's gone it's not gone it's not, no, gone. It's not really no. gone no it's, it's not really gone you, we've always said that in other episodes like you, you know if you really really want something there are ways to get it in the sense of like you know like events I, again sorry to push it again but like the amount of times I've been warboot and I've seen stuff that I haven't been able to get mm. raged and I've been like if I don't but, get it now and I'm never going to get it. But we're in the hype zone we're in the hype zone though. Like when everything's big and popular mm. and there's a lot of like fanfare and FOMO around stuff. True. Yeah. That's when stuff's hard to get. You wait, yeah. you let it let fizzle yeah. out. Just chill. Yeah. It'll that's come. Yeah. Be patient. Yeah. This is a hobby about patience and everyone's so like <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> now. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah. Um but no, like yeah, I, I'm I'm I, I'm actually excited because I think what they'll do is when the Amazon short comes out at the end of the year, I think that you might I, I would it'll be it would make sense. I forgot about that. See, yeah. See about that. so it much would, stuff's it, coming it would, out. It would, make, it would make sense to, to release times. it again then because people yeah. will watch it on Amazon and go, Oh, I, I, I wonder whether they yeah. might you know, with the with the uh, event coming up pretty soon they might just announce Look, it, just be a if, if the drop. If the box is popular and people keep buying it, GW are a business. They'll make more of them. Exactly. On the exactly. I'd be very surprised yeah. if they didn't. Exactly. Be, yeah. Yeah. I'd actually like to see a box where they, a limited box where they do a model of all the characters from the game. Like, as in. That would like, be really cool. I think, I, I think a lot of people yeah. were, that was, whether realistic or not, I think that was on everyone's kind of wish list. Yeah. For, yeah. 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 I'd love, I'd for love stuff I'd around love the game. That, yeah. that would have been yeah. nice if there was a little, like, box of, like, three characters or something. That would have been yeah. quite cool. You can't forget the old chaplain, mate. Uh, I'm not going to yeah. spoil it for anybody. I know who the yeah. chaplain is. I'm not going to say anything. But no. uh, yeah, you can't spoil it. For <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, I think that would have been great. Um, and yes, yeah, you know, fingers crossed that that does that does happen. So yeah. Well, uh, final little PSA for the preamble. <gasps> Much like the real Slim Shady, it's back. The uh, Onyx, is Onyx back. painting the, land. The Onyx stands up. Yeah. You. You don't even need it to say it, right? The Onyx painting lamp, it's our favourite painting lamp. You've heard me rant and rave about it for yeah, we've 70 odd episodes now. We hear you. We've been struggling to keep them in stock because you keep on ordering them. They keep on get flying off the shelves. Yeah. So we're trying our best to keep them in stock. The latest drop, if so to speak, is back. They're in stock. We've got them ready to ship. So link in the description. Get yours now. If they do go on back order, I strongly suggest that you do back order them because we do have stock regularly coming in. So yeah. It's not like a indefinite you know months and months away stock is sort of rolling on so if they do sell out they do sell out very very quickly so I encourage you to go and grab one while you can uh, but otherwise like I say if they go on back order you'll get one fairly soon so I do encourage you to do that as well yeah yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we've put everything in place to try and facilitate the demand as much as possible within our power um, you know so if they are in stock grab one if they're on back order you yeah. grab one and we'll get it to you as soon, soon as, as possible. physically possible hmm. uh on that note, should we do the listeners' comments? Yes, sure. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Uh, Met G says it's kind of crazy that GW didn't have a starter pack of Titus and his gang with a cheap brush and some paints. 
Oh, it's like like mystic just, mystic James. I literally said yeah. that five seconds ago. Well, it's true but, though, isn't it? I mean, it really annoys me when in the preamble you guys start saying stuff that I know <laughs> is coming up in the comments. Right. It's, yeah. it's good. Yeah, it's good. No, yeah, I, I agree. I would love to have had all the characters uh, as a like. I could have seen that box. as a. You know, they do the the set currently. It was an assault intercessor, and now I think it's Infernus Marines. It's like a little starter kit. I think you get three yeah. space yeah. marines and then some paints. I think they're Tyrannus as well. Maybe you know, like the space marine heroes sets that they yeah that would be amazing oh yeah. that would have been good maybe yeah, that, what like right. blind bad characters from the game yeah but but not black. we all know what you're going to get but yeah. you know yeah. well, the no because like you know they always do the one that's like blacked out silhouette that could have been the chap yeah, yeah. could have been but you'd know it's a chapman because he's got the crosiest yeah, yeah like but, you know it'd be like yeah, you still got to get know, it haven't yeah. you yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 no that'd be great that'd yeah but cool. I think yeah limited collector's box would be great and even if it couldn't be all new molds which again I, again, I understand the molding cost but like um, I think uh, I think that you could have easily just done heads yeah, and, and like stock models. Like imagine putting like the relevant Chaplin head on one of the Chaplin models that's available. Yeah. Or like, you know, there's there's ways to do it, you know, um, or a limited, even just like a limited upgrade pack or something that like, you know, it's one mold and then that way you can still use those bits on other Ultramarines. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah. Or but, um, channel your inner kit bash. Go exactly, to, yeah. Go to the bit shop. True. Bit shop. How's that been going, Paul? Uh, Hectic. Actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, I think I'm ahead of schedule. You are, yeah, you are ahead of schedule. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not too bad. I think I sort of gave myself until almost Halloween to get how, all the. How many parts. spare Warhammer bits have gone on the shop since we announced it two weeks ago? We had 200 or so on there, and it's now up to about 700, isn't it? I think. Yeah, but I mean, I think we hit over 800 or something. But bear in mind, it's that's now gone down to like 670 or something because as as fast as I'm putting them on there. So what you're saying is, if you need a bit for your kit bash, yeah. you know where to get, go. Get the quick. So we, I, I managed to get all the Primarius parts on there. There's yep. some Necron parts on there. There's some Admech. There's a, a very slim S scattering slim of Admech. Picking of Admech on there. Um, Death Watch. Yep. Got all the Death Watch parts on there that we've got. It's exciting tuning into the uh, to know, the CG right? shop, the CG Bay shop, because you can be the like, oh, I wonder what faction they'll drop today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we got. I got a few things. I didn't want to just concentrate solely on primaries yeah. so I thought I'd get a few bits of other, you know bits and pieces but I, I think next once I've finished some, a few of the I've got like 100 admec parts I'm putting on we've got several hundred admec parts but I just wanted to as get, in variants yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. I just wanted to get a few parts for if, anyway to get you started but I think after that we're going to get the, Black Templars, um, Black I think Templars yeah. on there. Yeah, because it's got quite a lot, got a lot of, of Black those, Templar so. parts. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. on. There. And they're all really cool, actually. Like, I think I, I, I've got to say this, like, and this pains me to say it as obviously the chapter that I love, but I think the Black Templar upgrade pack mm. parts is probably one of the it's best. It's the benchmark, I it's think. It's one of the it's best. The I, I'm, I'm like, I look at it like a little bit yeah, side eyed, like, oh, I yeah. do, like, <laughs> do, like, do like those parts quite a bit. I think we got all the. Well, we've got some Blood Angel parts now. I think mostly Death what? Company. What? You're selling it? You're selling it? It's death, a lot of Death Company on Why there. was I? Why, where, we're giving uh, well, away Blood Angel parts? Had already, yeah, you, I had a few. You, yeah. yeah, you've already had your fingers. <laughs> as if James didn't get <laughs> first nibs on them. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, already there's, there's one Death Company head type that I really like. So yeah. I, I, I grabbed that pretty quick. And, yeah, it, and my favourite power sword from the Death Company box. So, so yeah. So <laughs> Straight in the bits box. Yeah, sorry. I that. I want that. Sorry if you open for those. I didn't have those. So there's a few bits. But yeah, everything's going swimmingly. Nice. Uh, Ririn86 says, arming yourself with knowledge about yourself and your project is one of the most important things I learned from this podcast that I've applied. Uh, inventory, the pile of shame, so I have a record of what I actually own. Mm. I time myself so I know how long things will take, and I accept that it will take till roughly 2097 until I finish. <laughs> well, those uh, you better be looking at some form of rejuvenate treatment there yeah, to, uh, to make you last longer. happy with that. That's fine, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think that's good cataloguing it all because then that's that way idea, you actually. know how bad the problem is. And and I think that's... Well, uh, no, that's, that's a good idea because you don't have to look at the pile of stuff. You can just look at a bit of paper and say, that's not actually that bad. Oh, come on, Paul. Get, get with the times. I mean, I'm, <laughs> see, I'm pretty See, an itemised list in like size 11 font yeah. seems a lot better <laughs> than looking at just like storage bins. For yeah. Yeah. Excel, Excel that. Yeah, no, um, I won't be doing that because I think the, the problem will scare me to, to yeah. hell. Yeah, it might take until 2097 for James to finish inventorying yeah. 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 a couple of gigs of storage space just yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be doing that. No. No. So, yeah. so yeah, but that's, a good that's, idea. That's a good, uh, that's a good episode. That's one of my favourite ones we've done. I think. Yeah, There's I a lot really of good enjoyed information it. in there. I think. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a good episode. Yeah, mm. I really enjoyed. It was it. nice to talk about um, like productivity without going super specific on like, oh, try this super niche specific trick for when you're painting this colour. It was nice to speak like 
or generally about rules you can apply that transcend that. that my my favorite thing genuinely is mindset. And I talk about that all the time on classes and stuff. Like I, I genuinely like mindset for me about what it's more impactful said, like, than any little trick yeah. that you can pick mm -hmm. up. I'm, I'm not video. going down the line of trying to be some sort of like, you know, positivity guru or some of that nonsense like that. <laughs> I, I, ge it. I genuinely mean like, just literally think, what am I trying to get done in this session? It's the mm. simplest thing. Like when you first sit down and it makes such a change to like what you actually get done in that session, I, you know, and, and, yeah. and like, irrelevant of, any, of your pile of shame, irrelevant of like what paints you've got, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that's one of the big takeaways that I think that really kind of like, I like to talk about with big people when they ask about sort of like how to improve like their production, productivity, all that kind of stuff. Like I think it's just, it's just really important that just your planning like is, yeah. is, is so important. And, and yeah. Yeah, I have changed. I mean, starting a couple of years back, I have changed from, I've got, I'm trying to get all of this done in one session, which just makes everything more difficult to, I think I'll just get the purity seals exactly, yeah. tonight or I'll just do this leg or I'll do the weapon tonight. Well, that's exactly so I, it. I find that much more, I'm, a much, I'm much more at peace with sitting down to paint with some sort of smaller goal yeah, well, last, to focus on. So, so last night we actually had uh, the hobby hangout with mm. uh, some of the patrons and, um, and uh, I'd done the exact same thing. So I, we normally do that for about a couple of hours or whatever. Um, and um, I had one thing that I wanted to get done in that session. Mm got that done and then i was like right well I've, I've achieved what i wanted to do and then i managed to get a load of other bits on the thing that i was painting that i wasn't quite happy with i managed to get that tidied and sorted as best as i, I wanted it for yeah. the time frame etc so mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah i got like bonus stuff done which again like if you set a minimal thing to start off with everything else is like the silver lining so yeah. so yeah which is which is which was good nice uh usher three says i agree with joe having a time-based goal I signed up for a tournament that required a fully painted army and it kicked me up the bum and I finally painted a whole custodies army for it. There you go. Nice. Right. Yeah, deadline. It's amazing what super, super heavily detailed models in a limited time frame will make you achieve. So yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but fair play. Yeah, like, I, 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 I don't play anymore. I guess you're going to dub me again here, George. But um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but the the um, the yeah, getting getting an army done for a tournament. It's a really rewarding thing when you put your models out on the table for the first time. Yeah. Like um, so yeah, it's good. What do you do after that though? Just sort of stand add to it. it. All I think about Increase. is you sign up for the next Escobar, tournament. Yeah, you sign obviously, up. you sign up for the next tournament with a bigger points That's increase. It. I and do then, another thousand points. Exactly. Yeah. No, of a completely different. Rather than doing the sensible thing, I mean, like, <laughs> I've just done a thousand points. I'm going to do fifteen hundred. You go. Mm. I'm going to do two thousand points of a completely different army. Yeah, I'm going to start a new army. Yeah. Not my new army. Two new armies. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You're actually entering a tournament against yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Both forces. <laughs> but the good thing about that is, if you do that, is that you, and I, I like doing that, like. Have it set in a day of a yeah. tournament, and like with your have a friend. Or I think the fact that it's a tournament is kind of arbitrary. Like it's just a date an event, for something, yeah, like an event. So, if, an event or meeting up yeah. with friends because you're doing like yeah. there's yeah. Like yeah. A just big a game thing. or whatever. It's just like having a, a set time point for needing it required. Mm. Yeah. I think if you do that with friends, so that you're like building your armies and spurring each other on at the same time, is actually a really good thing. And that kind of nods in quite nicely to what I was I've said in other episodes about having like a, a like a painting evening with your friends like once yeah. a week or like you know you could rather than maybe doing a gaming evening, uh, have a painting evening where you've all got the new stuff you're working on for the deadline and you can all help each other to, and push yourself. Oh, well, you've got, you've got 10 infantry. Oh, I've only got a character. I need to get the 10 infantry. It kind of spurs you on to get yeah. more done. So I, I quite like the look of those um, like escalation leagues that people do. Yeah, I think that's really great. cool. Where you like, especially if you haven't started that game before. So it's like, oh, Age of Sigmar looks really cool. It's been on the radar. Let, let's give it a go. And then what you do, hopefully you've got friends or a group like in your gaming group yeah. everyone does the same thing and you go right we're going to start with 250 points yeah and then all you've got to do is get your 250 points of that army done painted ready and then not only that you've only got to learn the rules and the game for those, for those units yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like baby steps and then you go right okay we're going to play that first game and then the next game in two weeks or a month's time we're going to do 500 points and yeah. then you just add you're adding like incrementally so it gives up. you a chance to say well, i don't actually like that game system or whatever and you haven't yeah. spent hundreds of pounds exactly. on stuff you're no yeah. longer gonna or play. even or even more like granular than that like you might just be a unit that you didn't yeah. you thought oh i'm gonna do you know 50 of this infantry type mm. you do your first 10 and then you play a game and you go oh, i don't really like how they play thank god i figured that out now yeah rather than having to commit to the whole lot yeah yeah i think it's a nice way of doing it yeah you don't even have to buy miniatures at that point if you're trying a game out to be fair and this is a massive segue but you can get like your biscuit tin your salt and pepper pots and stuff like that you can literally <laughs> wow. play the game with that people do uh people yeah. do tabletop simulator as well don't they? have you ever yeah. seen uh do you remember the tv show bottom 
Yes, great when program. they played uh, chess. Great program. Yeah, yes, do it, they use Spider Man grapes, all sorts of frozen prawns. <laughs> grapes are a bit dangerous. You might you might well, crush them. Lean over the table. To yeah, tomato sauce, yeah. didn't yeah. they? That as could well. count as a real was... casualty, though. To be fair, you crush the <laughs> a skeleton yeah. on a stick. They used all sorts of stuff for their game. I love that so, program. Yeah, it's great. So great. <laughs> George is like, what? Yeah, yes. <laughs> a little bit. It's little amazing. Bit. Rick Mail all day long. Yeah, great, great, great actor. Uh, Walker Sith AB says. The Space Marine 2 campaign for me was the perfect length and I think that it's about the same as most other single player games on par with things like Doom and Halo. Uh, I think general perspectives might be skewed because the way the industry has changed, games are very much split into multiplayer live service and huge sprawling RPGs with very little in between. Uh, Even Dark Souls is arguably, as long as it is because of difficulty and punishing mechanics, rather than the length or depth of story. Mm. It's quite a good take, I think. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. can't really, I don't really know too much about the length of video games. I see I've got the terminology right there. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really, I don't really, I don't try, really, I'm, try, I'm trying, oh, yeah. I'm try, I'm try, I am trying, I promise you. Like, I'm trying to <laughs> step out the old, old ways. Um, I, I don't, I can't really comment. I've the, I mean, I played Space Marine 1 and the campaign length in that for me felt, felt about right. I don't know. Yeah. yeah but people probably really disagree with that. Maybe it should be longer. I did. Be shorter, but this, this is obviously on the, the back of the episode we did about Space Marine 2. And one of my criticisms mm. was that it just felt a bit underwhelming from the campaign front. But having said that, like, I do think that's fair in comparison to like yeah. those other games. I always say I, I wanted more, but actually, I think. But that's a good thing. Yeah, if you want more, I mean, it means it's great. With you know, the context like, of this one particular game, you've got your your campaign, which is which is actually it is fine. Uh, but then you've got your operations, which gives you the more that you're looking for anyway. So, yeah, I think and, and it's, I, it's I, pretty good. I had a look at some of the things that, because they're doing, if you've got a season, see, I've really been schooling. Here. <laughs> Are you going to say season <laughs> pass? If you've got a season pass. Oh, he yeah, knows yeah, the I'm words, Paul. Cool. He knows pass. the words. Yeah, see, I've been, I've been, I've been learning. Uh, if you've got a season pass, you can then, um, you can then obviously get, they're releasing like a new enemy, one new enemy, whether that's, I, I think people have been saying, is it a new faction or is it a new, I think it'll be one enemy. You get the new, new guns as well. You get the, um, the Vol- Volkite pistol as well mm-hmm. which is quite good so yeah. yeah Dark Angel skins we're not going to talk about them um, skins and, that's another yeah, one yeah, that's yeah, another yeah, buzzword yeah, he's got that one. I've got all the skins. lingo no idea but all the lingo yeah. um, and uh, and then like obviously there's more things more things coming down the line so I think the fact that the and this is the one thing that I think that Sabre have been amazing with and that, that everybody that I've seen doing review videos and talking mm-hmm. about it is you know the fact that they're actually going cool well there's all these other things that we can add that add value for the people that bought the game and also it's not going to stagnate I think with uh, Space Marine 1, one of the biggest things of it after the, you complete the campaign was obviously the multiplayer that was mm. in that. And the multiplayer was, the servers for that were, were online. I think, it's, are they still online for that for, the, for Space Marine 1? Or are they I wouldn't have playing? thought so. No, I, but I know that they, I know that someone, <laughs> someone can correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I'm, I know that the multiplayer servers were, were operating I think, for a long time after the game had been around because it was so good. Like Dreadnought oh, mode, yeah, sure. when you took out, took control of the Dreadnought, and mm. you were like, that was amazing, you know. And like, um, I think in general, the servers for Xbox 360 have been closed completely now. Aren't they? Or, or, I don't know. Isn't so that just maybe. the? We're we're going to be talking completely out of our depth here, but wasn't that just like the store and stuff that they were deactivating, or was it all? The, I, don't know. I have no idea. It's been but, a long time but, since. But I all I can say is that I remember having many a good evening playing a multiplayer on uh, on uh, the Xbox version. Because mm. uh, that, that is literally the, the only online console gaming I've ever done, and it wasn't even my console; it was around my mates. Mm. So, um, so yeah, um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm super pumped with what they're all doing with, with uh, Space Marine Two because because ultimately it ties all back into obviously miniatures and stuff, and obviously the industry. Yeah. And just it just means that more and more people are going to get into this fantastic game, painting miniatures, being involved in the industry, going to the event, science goal. Um, and like loads, yeah, of, sure. loads, loads of other yeah, things like that. So, so yeah. you know, um, <laughs> but um, but that that ultimately is is I think the real positive that comes out of it. You know, and um, and yeah, I'm 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 I will at some point play the game. I don't I I know all the stuff that happens in the campaign because because of reels and and it's been a uh, difficult Instagram to stay and, away and, from. Like, you know, it's I know true, all yeah. the stuff that you know, and obviously you you both have been saying about it. Adam has been going on about it. Obviously, he's a massive Ultramarine fan. Like you know, so like I, I know all the stuff that happens, but. I still want to play the campaign. I still yeah, you still got yeah. to. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, a good, it's a great little space brain experience yeah. just to play through that. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm keen to. So yeah. yeah. Uh, and they've adjusted it a lot of the enemies so it's not, not too hard for you now. Okay, so you good. should do it. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy death mode, mate. What do you want about? Sure. 
Yeah, sure. Angel Death Mode <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a blindfold. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> two but, thumbs tied behind but, your back, button bashing the whole way. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, we've got Red Seven who says, "I've gone from painting about thirty minis a year uh, to over two hundred and fifty. The bits that help are understanding why I'm painting, which is for them good quality gaming minis, rather than keep trying to push to high levels and abandoning projects." Uh, but also finishing models and regularly getting a finished piece is great motivation. Uh, sitting at my desk whenever I have time, even if I'm not feeling it, it's surprisingly off. It's surprising how often you grab something and get progress. Uh, aside from the producti- productivity, just painting regularly does so much for brush control and speed. Yeah, exactly. It's like anything. Like if you, you know, if you haven't ridden a bicycle in a long time, getting back on one feels a bit weird and you pick it up very quickly or like, mm. it's like, like anything that muscle memory returns quite quickly, um, which is, which is great. And, um, and, and I, I, it's great to hear that you're, you're smashing through projects. I think setting the ceiling, it's again, like sitting at the table and deciding what you're going to get done in the session, like setting, what is the purpose of this? And we always talk about that. Like, what is the purpose of the thing that you're painting? Is it to enter a competition? Is it to play a, a tournament? Is it to have something really nice on the shelf? Setting that from the outset of a project determines the effort and work and time investment, and it really translates to everything else that you do to the miniature. So I think what you're doing is fantastic. Uh, the fact you're painting so many models and you beat last year's total is a good thing. I think the thing to do is now go, right, year next year, how many more am I going to paint? You know, well, What's the purpose of the projects I'm painting this year and try and do that? Um, and the quality will increase as you do that as well because you'll get you, you'll paint more, get better at painting more efficiently or more neatly or whatever the case may be. Um, and, but, and just increasing your annual annual miniature production will be good for you. That's I an think awful the, lot, isn't it? <laughs> what, 350 models? Mm. You'll do it. You can I, do th- I think the models. purpose thing's quite important, though, because mm. it's like someone like myself, I struggle with like the individuality of certain things, but sometimes forcing yourself to kind of just be okay with some things being 90% instead of 99%. Yeah. Because when you see everything finished, like... We, what what I mean by this is when I'm working on say one model in a squad, yeah, I might sit there and fuss over something like really really pedantic that like no one's ever really going to notice. But once all ten are done, like they're sat in front of me, I can be like, okay, it's fine. Mm. If you get what I mean, so like kind of trying to motivate yourself to get like the overarching project finished, yeah, rather than getting super caught up in tiny unimportant things. If that makes sense, yeah, because it's like a new the the easiest way to deal with a lot of this stuff is to just be okay with it. Mm. rather than trying to fix every tiny little granular thing. I think people want to paint minis that they're proud of and maybe are better than the last one. They want to always be doing really, really good work. But within that, it's trying to be okay with not every single thing that you paint has to be a representation of the highest possible echelon you can achieve. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm in that sort of camp. I, I obviously want to progress. I want to get obviously better with my painting. Well, you have, but like, that's that's but, not um, that's not a statement. That's a fact. I know, like, but you've you've progressed massively since since you, well since you've been here. I've seen your painting increase hugely. Yeah, but it's also partly just it's quite nice just to chill and just sit yeah. and you know not not exactly switch your brain off while you're doing it, but it's nice to just let everything else slip away. And it's kind of just like a I don't know like a bit like a mental health thing where you can just focus on that for a little while. Yeah, not it's because great. I mean I don't play the games or anything like that, so. None of what I paint ends up in a squad or anything. No. So it's just, you know, my the end goal is just to... Uh, Have like, something that you're proud of. Uh, yeah, I do quite... I, sometimes I get quite sad that I finished a model. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I don't know about anyone else. No, no, always, it so it's a bit okay, weird, but... weird thing to say, but I want to finish the model, but then I'm a bit like, oh, I finished the model. <laughs> and I think, oh, I'll have to paint another one now. But I... I want to finish the model, but I enjoy the process of getting to that point. Yeah. But sometimes I don't want to get to that point. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's quite cool it's insight. A, it's a weird thing to say. Or... No, that's fair. That's where that's where batch painting and doing an army helps because you get you True. get that you get that hit of oh yeah I've completed it oh I'm, I'm a bit gutted I've finished that oh I'll do do some more like, yeah. you know, that that's where the army comes from I think. Do you find that because um, I feel a little bit of a similar thing of what you're saying? Do you find that it's kind of the you know when you like finish a TV series that you've yeah, been watching yeah. for like years and it's over. Yeah. You're like, what now? Something's missing out of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You kind of got to look. Yeah. Not only have you got to pick what you want to paint next, but you've got to like get invested in it. You've got to allow something new into your life, yeah. haven't you? Well, if you've got a detailed <laughs> Excel with your full pile of potential, you'll be able to pick very easily. <laughs> so, yeah. well, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, I, there's always something. There's always something in the box to get back out and have another uh, a go at. But yeah. any other little hobby updates from anyone? Uh, 
before we get going? So, yeah, one thing. I, I went uh, on holiday for a week uh, just before, obviously, this episode. And uh, uh, the, I went on a cruise and it was choppier than a Kung Fu movie. But like... Uh, I, wow. I managed to bump into uh, somebody on the cruise that, that said, oh, I love the podcast. So, Lewis, if you're watching, I just want to say a big thank you for saying hi and coming over and saying hi. And, um, and yeah, it was really nice to meet you. I didn't get a chance to chat to him about miniatures. I'll find out what he collects. So maybe mm. you can, if you're watching this, you can put it in the comments. It'll be great to, uh, to hear, to sort of find out what it is that you do in the hobby. But, yeah, just a big thanks for saying hello. That's how you do a shout out, and You actually get the name. Of the person, that yeah, you how, you're, you're good at that, aren't you, Paul? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you been painting much uh, this week, Paul? You, you know, I have. You, this is a loaded question. You want me to say that I've been painting Blood Angels, don't you? Yes, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, I, I finished my Blood Angels captain, yes, Terminator armor from splendid, the, Paul, from the uh, what was the combat patrol thing. You know, everyone's painting those in a minute, so I get my yeah. one sort of finished, done that. Uh, it's on screen now. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, so I finished that up. That was quite good fun to paint. And uh, as I say, I was quite sad to finish that, but equally happy that I finished it. Well, you know what the answer Roller is? Roller coaster. Paint. You need to paint more more red marines. The, the logical solution is, of course, to paint thousands of them. Well, yeah. I've already started a uh, Blood Angels. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, boy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got the, you know, the Leviathan. Uh, is it, Lieutenant in the is it Phobos armor. Yes, yep. I've painted. I've got, I started that. The one with the smoke grenade or the uh, no, he's got the, the tyranny armor. Oh yeah, he's, stuff, he's so sick. He's yeah. his, you know, he's yeah, sick. Yeah, his, his pointy stick with the predator style blood on the blade. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I've, I've, I've all the armors painted. So it's just all uh, paint. I've, I've even like, with this one because you know the yeah, armor. It's just red armor, isn't it? I paint that. Done that now. So I'm just trying to do some sort of leather texturing on all the yeah, pouches amazing. and the, the belts and things to see how that well that looks. But nice. um, he's. He's pretty. I mean, I've done done the armor, and he's pretty close to being finished. It's just all a it's little such a cool pieces. model. Like, it's, it's such yeah. a cool model. I was actually I was a bit intimidated by it at first. I, I bought it off eBay a, a, quite a while ago now. It was all mostly pre built, and I just left it in the bag. I didn't really want to touch it, but but I, I really think since doing the Skaven Visic, yeah, that's really help me I said to you that to because do. you paint a massive model and you're yeah. like oh my god this thing's like Everest and then you get a single space marine character and you're like oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah look at that hill like, over there yeah. look at that little hill <laughs> look at that little, little, little speed bump <laughs> there yeah. like, you know, so, yeah. it didn't, so I thought yeah I, I'll, just, I'll just start it so I've painted yeah I've started painting that so that will nice. finish relatively soon I hope we'll, See, have to, we'll have to save some of this for the for the post show I think we'll, yeah. uh, we'll get into this because yeah. I think I think there might no be a, yeah. there might be some blood <laughs> angels Brooding in the horizon. Yeah, I think Possibly. so. It's just a yeah. coincidence. Sure. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world-class and award-winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about, and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Siege Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles and techniques, from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy-to-follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios. Okay, main topic for this week. Competition season is upon us. Golden Demon is back at, uh, is it Spring? Spiel, Spiel Essen. Essen, yeah. It's, uh, Short it's, German listeners, I'm sure you really appreciate the pronunciation there. <laughs> uh, yeah, James, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about what you're, uh, you're planning on going, of course. I am, so yeah. So it'd be yeah. cool to talk about your entries, what you've learned from previous comps, what, learned, uh, what your learned, plans are. I've learned a lot from previous comps. Namely, don't paint in the hotel room the morning of, uh, morning of or the night, bef night before. Um, yeah, it's funny that. Uh, yeah. 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 Who would have thought? Uh, you know, the pressure it is, not, is not worth it. Um, I actually, so yeah, so earlier in the year, I had another competition and I actually, it was, uh, it, it, I actually, didn't have to paint anything before it, like like as in the night before, the week before. I was literally, mm. I was a, a done like a week in advance of it, which was a really nice feeling. And I think that's one thing just to anybody, like 
if you are thinking of entering a competition, don't leave it to the last minute because it's just really not worth the stress and, and the aggravation. That's before we talk about flying, making sure you get your flight, making sure you get to your hotel okay, yeah. all, that, all, that, all that nightmare stuff. How do you there. make, how do you come to the decision that you're done? Because I would imagine for a competition painter, that's a difficult point to say. The, the decision is made it. for you because much like we spoke about in the preamble with deadlines and things. Yeah. It gets to a point where you haven't got a choice. Yeah. And yeah. that's because the uh, entries are I've closed. I've been taken off of you as yeah, you're yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, still painting it as you're handing it <laughs> yeah. in. Like, no, it's not it. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's like, yeah. But, um, uh, um, could, yeah. But yeah, no, like, I, I think, I think, yeah, like, it, the planning has, has been something that I have always tried to do. But then what happens is I get so immersed in what I'm painting. Because I, I, I always, I don't, I don't just pick something that I maybe have a slight warming to. For anyone knows, but I always paint Blood Angels for comp because I just, in, I, I find the yeah. combination of painting the thing that you are super passionate about with, I'm trying to paint the neatest, sharpest, smoothest, best I can. That for me puts me in the best position for me as a painter in the sense of like, I present something that I am really happy with and I'm in, I'm enamored of it, if that makes sense. Like it's the thing that I'm, I, I love, you know? Mm. Um, having said that, like I did have an entry for this year that I'm not going to be taking because I just, I have not had the time to get it done. Um, and I, and I, I've, 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 I've done this for the previous comp that I entered this year, which was, I had a bus that was doing something different and, and I, it just got to the point where I was like, it's not finished. I've got three days. I could uh, like, paint till like midnight, 1am every night. Like, you know, mm. from the moment I get home from the office or studio, like it's just not worth it. Like, yeah. you know, I'm not going to have as good an experience by presenting something a that I'm not hundred percent happy with because I've rushed it or it's not complete or not where, or there's this little bit that's still niggling me or whatever. And I think that it's actually better to just park it, save it, pick it back up in the future, and then present yeah. it when it's when you're 100 percent happy with it. It's unlikely to be your best work as well. Exactly. Yeah. If yeah. you're working on it like, like two in the morning the night before, yeah, it's probably not. You got that's when you go back to the thing of asking yourself what is the purpose of doing this. Exactly. Yeah. If yeah. the purpose is to improve as a painter, it yeah. feels like when you're painting it in that frame, you're just doing it to tick a box mm -hmm. and say, yeah. "Oh, this is finished. I'm entering it," yeah. rather than. I'm enjoying the process. I'm learning. I'm getting better as a painter. Yeah, no, I agree completely. Mm. I, and that's, that's the thing. I think so this time around, I've been like, right, obviously I had to look at the categories. I was like, right, um, I wanted to enter this one. I wanted to enter into this one. I want to enter this one. So like there, I have got, I had three entries that I wanted to do. Uh, oh, sorry, I had four entries that I wanted to do. One of them I've shelved because I just can't get it done in time. Um, you know, uh, and, and it's a real shame because it's the one that's completely different from anything else that I'm painting that I wanted to spend the most time into. And I've done the composition. I've like put it, put it on the plinth. I've done all that kind of stuff. And, and like, it's all done. Um, and it's a model that like, I've actually, I, I'm happy to say what it is. Like it's, uh, so I absolutely love the, uh, Warhammer, uh, Epic, sorry, Epic 40,000, which is a very old game. Mm. Uh, the Lucius pattern Warlord Titan. So the metal Warlord Titan, the original OG metal small one. Um, I love that. The, I've always liked the Lucius forge world pattern, like, models i've always liked the weapons that they produce there and, and and that model for me growing up as a kid was a model that i always i loved like absolutely loved that model um so i wanted to do that for small scale um and, and i've done like a plinth where it's stepping over like a like almost like a base and there's like a bunker and all this kind of stuff um and quite frankly like i just did not like the weeks have escaped me like it's like trying to juggle sand and i just i just have not had the time to to to, to, to get it done yeah um um so that shell for a future comp and it's something i still want to paint i've got yeah. the scheme I've, i ordered the, the the sort of like the the ref i ordered transfer because i wanted it because it's so small i wanted to i was debating whether to freehand some of the like the legio symbols and stuff but i've got a transfer sheet from adeptus titanicus to use on it um because it was only ever it was only ever i only ever saw it painted in green in the green i don't know if you remember it the, the green livery that it used to have i don't know what titan legion it was so someone can correct me in the comments but um but i wanted to paint in it uh paint it in a different i was going for like a blue um i think the legio astorum i think is the, the right. legio that i wanted to do it as just something a bit different um like blue and yellow and some golds and silvers and stuff but yeah so i shelved that and um and then i always enter single fig because i think single fig as much as it's probably one of the hardest categories because it yeah. gets so many entries um i think that it's a really good category to i think single figure is a good category to measure where you're at as a painter compared to other painters because it, it's the most I don't want to say minimal investment, but it is the most minimal investment of, of like for an entry because you can just focus on one model, present yeah. that, and it's done. Um, so I always end single fig. Not that I've got a hope in hell's chance of ever placing, and I'm quite quite adamantly happy to admit it's, that. It's funny, isn't it? Because like, it's one of the like smallest yeah. categories in terms of difficult. like size. Maybe small but scale is like the small scale. Potentially, is, but yeah. I'm saying in terms of like accessibility, it's like everyone's got single yeah. miniatures laying around, right, as well. 
but because of its like easy accessibility, ease of like time, it tends to be the most cutthroat category of yeah. any yeah. of them. Because yeah. it's that thing of like I can invest five hundred hours into one model rather than squad, for example, you might have to split those five hundred hours across five yeah. models or ten models yeah. or, or in, a, or in a large vehicle or in a jewel or in a diorama or something like that. Yeah. Whereas in that category you find that people are going very, 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 very intense yeah. on this one guy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the thing, and like obviously with the with the format of GD and the same as Iron Skull, like the, with that uh, first, second, third uh, sort of format, it does take obviously like only three other people that are that have got way more way more sort of higher quality models to to be in the category, and obviously you might you won't place. But the thing is, even with saying that, and like that, I don't want that, that to ever put anyone off of entering single fig or like or a competition. Again, it's just a really good category to go to enter a piece where you focus on one thing and you present something that you've put all your hours and time and effort into and you haven't had to split that uh, that visual attention across two models in a duel or, or eight models in a diorama or 10 models in a squad or five models or three models in a squad or whatever the case may be. So like I, I single fig and I, I'm going to be entering my Lamartis because I absolutely love the model um, and, and like that's just one of my favorite models I think I've painted this year. Um, mm. You know, so I've got a, couple of extra things to do to it before obviously uh, before GD so I've just got to do a couple of extra highlight stages and some other bits and refinement of certain bits and a bit more glazing on the marble and, and other than that he's pretty much there um, and then uh, I'm actually going to enter vehicle for the first time as well this year so vehicle is a category that I've always loved again I see it very much like single figure yeah. because single miniature a single model miniature or single model that you're painting but I think you can do lots of things with the vehicle. Um, so I'm actually going to be entering. Is it a Mordian tank? It's not. No. Oh, no I didn't. I no. know what it is. No, because I've seen yeah, it. You've seen I? it. Yeah. And I did not expect this from you at I all. Did, I yeah. wouldn't have expected vehicle from you. Being yeah, honest, I know. not that I don't think of you as someone who's capable of painting a vehicle, but it's not really a particular niche in terms of competition painted that you've expressed. Well, this, this is before. the thing. So I've never entered vehicle before. And again, I'm just going to caveat everything I'm saying now. I have zero expectations for for, for anything from Golden Demon. I don't expect to even place. I, I, if I get finalist, amazing. Because it's Ger it's Germany. There hasn't been a mainland Golden, let's say mainland Europe, the Golden Demon since I think 2018. I think it's been a minute. Last one. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been the last one. So like, again, you're going to get so many amazing yeah. painters there. Like it's going to be like, you know, uh, I, I've got more chance of hitting a star with a shotgun if I, if I, you know, than, mm. than placing. And I understand that totally. But the, but the goal of it for me is just to try and paint again, the best thing I physically can present it. And then, and then that's it, you know, like, um, uh, I'm actually going to present my contempt of dreadnought from the heresy blood angels army that I've done. Cause I fell in love with that model when I was painting it and it needs a little bit of, TLC in some areas, obviously we've photographed it quite a bit. You know, it's been we've, I've handled it loads. It's been taken around a few places and stuff, so it needs a bit of a tidy up and putting on the plinth and stuff, etc. But so I'm going to present that because I just I just I love the model. Like I love the Contemptor Dreadnought. I think it's one of my favourite Dreadnought uh, Dreadnought uh, chassis. And um, and yeah, that's that's something that I'm going to present. And then um, and then I'm going to uh, squad for me again. Is squad is something that I absolutely love as a category because it's not just so much presenting multiple models it's more a case of every single one has got to be consistent to each other and they've got to have they've got to look like a squad yeah and obviously the 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 the, the 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 sort of granularity of that you could have like a ragtag like a kelly's hero squad yeah. or you could have like but generally speaking you want them obviously to look like a squad but the thing i love about squad is it just gives you loads of ability to create character and personality within a unit and like the consistency of the painting from model to model there's lots of stacked layers of like things that you need to take into consideration compared to a single figure yeah. if that makes sense or even dual mm. um i think i think like I, I i again the only the only demon i've won is a, was in 18 was a dual uh heresy one and, and like that for me is a completely different thing where you've got not not only have you got to take into consideration obviously just the miniatures but you've got to take into consideration the interaction the the way that the, the the setting or the story you're trying to tell all that kind of stuff so Dual is something that I think is a really interesting category, uh, same as diorama and all that kind of stuff. But it's not something, quite frankly, that I have the time to. to yeah. To, to, is it following to... the um, Adepticon rules from this year in the sense of dual and diorama so. being I, merged? I think so. I, you'd have to correct me on that. I've only looked all cards on the table. I've only looked at the categories that I'm entering because I was just yeah. like, right, well, I'll, I, I'm only entering those, so I just want to want to enter that. Have you got any uh, like? hopes or expectations from the event like what are you most looking forward to about genuinely going there? i've never been to, to essence bill i've never been to that convention before i know it's a massive board gaming and war gaming convention um so generally just meeting loads of new people um and, and seeing a lot of the retailers and stuff that are there 
Um, and, and ultimately, obviously, just seeing a lot of the painters that I've seen at competitions previously, catching up with them because I haven't been to, I didn't go to Adepticon or GD, um, you know. So just really just catching up with a lot of people and mm. um, and and just just having a weekend, just doing the thing that I love, you know. And that, that's you know that that's really kind of what what I'm I'm looking forward to, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, again, I just want to take some some newer models that I painted and and just see how they do and you know if if, if i get finalists on all of them i'll be amazed i'll be yeah. i'll be because because uh, of how because <laughs> of how blooming high the, the caliber is going to be this yeah. year you know um I, again it's been six years since a european a mainland european um event and obviously when they've been held in the uk like but not everyone comes over from europe so people will <laughs> i feel out. like every golden demon now we all sit here and say this one's going to be a big one because of yeah they haven't been able to enter for so long or because of like covid it feels like everyone now is like a big one because it ha not, there hasn't been one in a while mm. or because it's in like a new venue or something. I feel like I'm saying that every year. It's not just that. It's the fact that uh, I think that the COVID, what it done for painters is actually it gave you a forced period of time where you just, you had to paint because yeah. so not for just, <laughs> just for sanity, but <laughs> at the same time, else, but, but like, so because of that, everyone had a load of backlog of highly painted, like well-painted miniatures. So obviously all the competitions after that are going to have like a flood of, 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 of amazing pieces. Um, and I don't, and I actually don't think that I think I suppose that, Europe haven't had one post COVID either, have they? No, 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 yeah. no, there's, there's that as well. I mean, obviously so, UK is um, Europe, but in terms of mainland. Yeah. yeah like not yeah. everyone flies over like yeah. for, 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 for UKG or for Fest in 23. Yeah, it's much like, more accessible you know, it's, for, it's, for them, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, so, yeah. Especially with um, like trains and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. There'll yeah. probably be quite a few people from Europe coming I, in. I think it's going to be absolutely rammed and like, and, and that's the thing. It's going to be such an amazing celebration of paint and like, and, and like, yeah, like I, 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 again, I've got zero expectations. Like there's no way I'm going to win anything and I'm going to say that now like just that some of the stuff I've seen that's going is just like crazy so yeah. like you know like, is it any does this year feel any different for you in terms of how you've prepared for it to previous better, years yeah yeah like I knew that when I was painting uh the Martis for the preview day and for like the, the, the pre-order day and for that I, I knew that I wanted to paint it for uh for a comp piece because I just because the moment I saw the base, I was like, wow, that's amazing. It comes with like a character style base. I was like, I'm, hmm. that could literally go on a plinth and look great, you know? So like that, that, that was initially there straight away. Um, and then, yeah, like squad, I just, again, I'm just covering a few models. I've, all I'm doing is rebasing them. So they're the same. Yeah. And then making a, making a, a, a presentation of a couple of characters. That's basically what I'm doing. Do you doing. think that obviously, like you said, you don't really expect to, to place anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Which I is fine. No way. So, yeah. Do you feel like the pressure's off? Yeah, that totally. Was, yeah, in that like, hundred percent. Like, and this is why it goes back to what I said at the beginning about Iron Skull. Like, I, I understand it's a competitive painting competition, yeah. but like, I don't. I've never. Well, it's diff It's difficult when you're there in the cabinet and you see stuff in the cabinet. Yeah. That competitive bug hits, bites yeah. you harder than than, a, than an anaconda. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. it's just it. You know, it just it does. But but at the same time, like, I think I never go into them with that mindset because all you're doing is you're setting yourself up for a downfall yeah. like you only get annoyed bitter or resentful and i've been there and i'm not i'm not sitting here like some angel that's never been that way before you know mm. like i have like there's been situations that have happened in the past and it's very frustrating etc for whatever reasons and and ultimately that doesn't give me a good experience at the competition and, no. I, and I would not recommend that to anybody that's either thinking about entering or going to competitions just do not do not aim for a trophy literally just go I'm painting something the best I can, and that's the most important thing to me. If you step away with it with something, it's a cherry on the cake, and that's a silver yeah. lining. That's like, wow, amazing, yeah. The the hard work, the effort, the lessons you learn, the improvement of painting that you make in that piece is actually the reward that you should value more, if that yeah. makes sense. You don't yeah. want to be disapp so disappointed that you, you, know, you don't get anything, that you don't enter again. Exactly, exactly. How bad would it I be? Do, if I don't think, yeah. from, from all the people that I've spoken to, like, I've only recently started entering competitions. Mm. And go it, after leaving the first one that I'd entered, I was more fired up than ever before because yeah. it wasn't this scary thing that I was worried it was going to be in my yeah. head. I actually left it like more relieved and more excited to do them again in the future. And everyone else that I've spoken to that has said, "Oh, you know, this was my first gold, golden demon." Yeah. Like that, everyone has had a pretty similar experience. And I actually found as well, like we were speaking about earlier, whenever I sit down to paint a competition piece, I always end up painting better than I thought I could. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because you're pushing yourself inherently by design mm. rather than and i think that's obviously due to down to how you structure your entry right if you go okay well i'm just going to sit in my comfort zone and paint this and it's going to be an example of what i'm capable of comfortably if you go like just a little bit out of your reach and you practice and you work hard and you do the best you physically can mm. every single time i've sat down to paint a competition piece and just sitting down with that mindset 
I always finish the model going, I didn't know I could, I didn't know I could do that. Exactly, I didn't know yeah, I had yeah. that in me. Yeah. And then that becomes your new benchmark. And then when you go on to do the next one, you go, I, I actually looked back, uh, funny enough, the other day I was uh, going through my cabinet, having a bit of a, an organize. And I was looking at my Golden Demon squad from 2023. Was Black it 2022? Yeah. Was that 2022? Uh, Fest was 23. 23. Yeah. So a year and a half ago. And I remember being so chuffed with that at the time. I thought mm. like, this is the best thing I've ever painted. Like this is, I'm, I thought it was like some new high that I'd set that I was going to struggle to match again. Yeah. If you know what I mean. <laughs> and I, I was looking at the models individually. And I was like, this looks worse than something I would paint just day to day now. Yeah. Like that, like I said, that sets the new benchmark. So like looking at those models, I was like, well, this is not only is this like well within my reach now, this is like I can do this comfortably. Yeah. And that becomes my new benchmark. And then I've been working on new pieces since then that I think are a lot, lot better. And then I've been working on new competition pieces, it's, hopefully into next yeah, year. This is that, and yeah. they are like leagues above that entry. And it's refreshing and comforting to know that in a year and a half's time, I'll probably look at that and yeah. say the same thing. Well, that's exactly it. That's why I talk about the silver lining. It's the lessons that you learn in doing that and being in that mindset of, I've got painting for a competition, so it's got to be the best thing I've ever painted. I've got to be careful, got to be neat, got to be clean. Or if you're going for a more weathered and textured or whatever, like that, that is really the lesson to learn. And then you take that, all the things that you learn, the experience you gain from doing that, being in that mindset and that pressurized environment, and that is what then makes you better for the next thing that you do and then like you said you look back and you go oh actually well that i can do that weathering on that leather really easily now yeah, yeah like, and then like, and then that becomes the reward rather than the trophy worrying about the trophies because yeah. yeah. then once you enter that mod into the cabinet like the it's like this you relief. can't do any more like, yeah. you, can't. Oh, you, you genuinely can't yeah. do more like it's like it's like you it's like you like it's like that uh, it's like you, you're free now go on go yeah. be with your friends you know like and, that, and, that, and the thing is is like once once you release it into the cabinet it's like you literally cannot do any more so then like worrying or stressing over it and again i say this now and i'm I'm going to completely 180 on it, but I'll enter stuff in the cabinet and I'll be a cabinet, cabinet cling on. Yeah. I'll be there looking in the cabinet, seeing if it's got a sticker, seeing if it's got like, we all do it like, you know, but, but ultimately in the moment, you've just got to realize that you've done all you can do. And I think that's yeah. the thing that like, I would never recommend you trophy hunt, which again happens, you know, that some categories are busier than others, et cetera. And then, you know, like I would never, I don't, my personal approach to it is never, trying to trophy hunt i paint stuff that i love i enter stuff that i have hopefully is the best thing i painted at that point in time and if it does anything if it gets anything like a okay, amazing you know because i hmm. i'm very privileged to have won one in the past there's lots of things that are with that which again i don't think that it was and i don't want to devalue it we spoke about it on another episode an early episode george but like for me the scenario and situation doesn't mean it was like a i don't define it as a proper win if that makes sense yeah so i'm very analytical with it i look at it it was 50% chance of placing because of the number of entries that are in the category. So yes, I'm glad I've got one. I'm very privileged to have one because of the situation scenario. It's not an out and out win for me. And I want to enter in a category where there's 20, 30, 40, 50 entries or whatever. And, and if I do win, it's because of the piece being at a level that it yeah. that, that, that is good enough. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I think that's the thing. Like, and I've won other things like um, I've won other competitions where, where I have, I have, been in a category with more entries than I've placed or whatever. And and they actually, for me, even though it's not a golden demon, they actually mean a bit more to me because, yeah. because I, I don't know why golden demon is regarded as like, it's been around for the longest this, time. It's, yeah, I know, you know, I know, like, and, I know all of that. And I know it's very, very prestigious. And I'm not by any means trying yeah. to take anything away from that, but it's funny that you could enter another competition that by merit of the entries is as prestigious in terms of the standard, mm. but, no one goes, oh, it's Golden Demon. Like no one, no one thinks of it in that way. Do you know what? It's, it, it's got, at the end of the day, GD has got- Who wants a BAFTA when they can have an Oscar? It's, it's got, <laughs> it's got, it's got pedigree. It's got the years. It's got the heritage. It's got, you know, the, the significance, you know, it's the painting competition of the company that makes the miniatures that we yeah. love, you know, and, and ultimately it's always going to have that premier, premium kind of thing to it, which is perfectly legitimate for what it is. Um, and, 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 and it is it is a it is a nice thing to have. Don't get me wrong. Like I do go in my cabinet and I I've got that there with like my I, I, well the same one of my my favorite entries I've ever painted. It's not my best now, you know. But you know I, I've, I'm just saying don't you know, like, like, don't discount other competitions. No, no, as no, I, no, big no, victories no. if you know mm, what I mean. No, That's I, I get that, now. but I, I'm I'm actually saying that as much as I'm glad I've got one. Like my my the one I got at Salute, my, the gold that I got for my squad at Salute actually means more to me because because I it was a fairer. I don't want to say fairer. It was more of a 
yeah. of a win. Does that make sense? And like, salute you know, is another one that's been going for me. Yeah, it's been going a long time. It's a you know, huge it's, it's, it's a great competition. I think it's good that know? we're getting obviously like with Iron Skull and like MPO and other competitions coming up. I yeah. think it's nice that people are starting to diversify a little bit, and those other competitions yeah. are getting recognized for what they are because if you see the standard of entries they are very very high they are yeah like I said that's the thing like, the, uh, the, it's not uh, like it's not like the people that go to Golden Demon don't go to those other competitions no you got no, like, so I, I'm, I'm more than happy to say it. like we got like I said like it, I, I'm all about growing the, the community and the competition scene like for, for people that maybe are a bit apprehensive of entering it you've got like Fen Model Show you've got obviously MPO you've got Iron Skull you've got Golden Demon you've got Monte San Savino in Italy it's obviously a trip like like, uh, like mm. SN is for an Adepticon you know you've got Salute! You've got loads of competitions out there, like, and they they all have am amazing presentations and entries in different formats. Obviously, you've got like the you've got the first, second, third format, or you've got, also like, as well, like even format. even on like the more local level, all of the things that we've spoken about in terms of what you get out of entering apply. I think regardless of the yeah, of the prestige do. of the competition, of course they do. Yeah, like yeah. pushing yourself as a painter, getting better, yeah. pushing yourself forward meeting with other people and talking about their entries. Like all of that applies regardless of what competition you are entering. hundred percent. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't like, I, I, I really, really mean this. Like, like don't just try chase the, the victory or the flag at the end of the, of the, of the, of the race. You know, like I, I, I don't, I personally don't, and it's an opinionated statement. I just don't think that's the way to approach it with mindset or with an approach. I think paint something you love, enter it once you're hundred percent happy with it. And then if you do well, amazing. If you don't, you've got this incredible thing that you're over the moon with. And mm. I think that's the real victory, you know. And 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 that's 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 what I would always encourage. And whenever we whenever I, I get asked about stuff from students on classes or in one to ones or whatever, like that's what I'll always say to people because I genuinely, from the heart, think that that is the best approach where you don't get disappointed and you end up with something that you love. And I, that's that's ultimately what it is. It's a celebration of all the hard work that everyone's put in, and that's really the virtue of it. So, mm. so yeah. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please do leave it in the comments down below if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, this week, we have a question from Adam L who says, I find myself buying new brushes every couple of months. I've been using the brush cleaning method with the vessel recently. How long do you expect brushes to last when using this method every couple of weeks? Uh, that's in regards to the brush care video that we did a few weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you again, if you're replacing brushes every couple of months, I would lean more on the amount of pressure that you're applying with a brush and how heavy you're actually being with the brushes. Don't forget, like, it's something subconsciously that probably you don't realize that while you're painting, the amount of pressure and wear you're, you're putting on the brush when you're on a palette. I don't know if you use a wet palette or a plastic palette or a dry palette, like, and they're both different tools with different purposes and have virtues and, be and benefits and disadvantages between the pair of them. But, but generally speaking, um, taking into consideration the actual friction that you're creating on the brush is massively the more friction you place on the brush the more detrimental the brushes will, will be and the, say, the more detrimental the damage will be to the brushes so be conscious of friction because you are creating it if you're using animal hair brushes or if you're using even synthetics you're still creating friction um but with that method of cleaning with the vessel and thank you for using that term uh <laughs> like uh you 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 I would probably say that you probably see an increase in in longevity by about half typically and, and again i don't know i don't know whether you're painting every day i don't again i don't know how hard you're being on the brushes if you're fully cleaning them if you're getting stuff in the fair there's a lot of there's, there's a so lot many of, variables there's a lot of this variables, brush care yeah. stuff yeah yeah and i think as well like even down to brush etiquette yeah like are you someone who washes your brush out very very thoroughly before the paint's dried out on it yeah or are you someone who carelessly leaves your brushes in a water pot or yeah. are you drying your brushes properly? Are you storing them vertically or are you storing them horizontally? horizontally. There's a lot of or variables. Even, up, even down with the brush. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, and there's yeah. also like oh, quality of brush. Up. You might yeah. get, you might just get unlucky and just get one that's mm. not great because especially with Kalinsky, they're handmade. Yeah. You, you buy 20 brushes, odds are you're probably going to get one that's not the best. Yeah. So there's a lot of variables within that. Um, I would say one thing that I just wanted to pull you up on in this, the way this is worded, you say you're doing it every couple of weeks. I wouldn't treat brush care as a scheduled thing. No, I agree. If it needs to be cleaned, it needs to be cleaned. Yeah. If it doesn't need to be cleaned, it doesn't need to be cleaned. I don't think it's this, this thing that you can just do on a schedule. For example, if this week you're painting an army that happens to be loads and loads of metallics or using this enamel paint that's particularly aggressive on the hair of the washes brush, and stuff like that. Or yeah. loads of washes. Yeah. Or, like it, it depends on what you're doing. It depends on how much you're painting that week. There's a lot of variables that go into that. So I'd say look for signs that a brush needs a clean. And I would say, unless you're cleaning it 
really, really thoroughly with aggressive brush cleaners and soaps. Yeah. Unless you're doing that every day, it's not really something that you're going to necessarily do too much of. I'd rather use over cleaning a brush than under cleaning it, if that makes sense. So I'd probably go on the, maybe if you're finding that your brushes aren't lasting very long, maybe due to how you paint and the things that you're painting and how much, how many hours the brush gets, maybe you're someone who needs to clean your brushes every week rather yeah. than every two weeks, maybe double up. Yeah. Well, this is, this is where I was saying about using tape to mark ones that are cleaned. You can then rotate, which obviously then increases the, the longevity of the brushes that you use. Uh, you know, if you've got two size twos, rotate them. So you're not always using it. If you only it, own yeah. one paintbrush and yeah. you're using it for everything, then yeah. it's going to run out. Yeah. There, there is, isn't it? And don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I know brushes are expensive, so I completely understand that. Like, you know, but unfortunately there's a lot of variables again i'm not going to go down that rabbit hole but there's a lot of variables into the creation of them the costings that go into that materials that you use um but um but yeah like if you've got a few brushes uh, the same size rotate them so that they're not you're not using the same brush uh, the, that you're not using like the, uh, the same brush for everything like for example on, on, a, on a, over a couple of months or well, whatever. i've said as well i've got some like sort of lower tier brushes yeah. that i'll do for certain tasks just to keep like keep the miles off yeah, of yeah, my yeah. nice brushes if that makes sense yeah 100%. especially if you're just like for little things like people don't think about this like if you're using gw paints for example citadel paints and they're mm -hmm. in the the normal lid like you and you're somebody using like a wet palette or even if you're using a dry palette, you've got to transfer that paint Onto from the pot yeah. to the palette using a really, really nice brush for that and like gooping up loads of paint and just slapping it on. Like that's where it's not I've necessary. got a brush specifically for that. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, 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 older, I still point it back to, to just circumnavigate back to the initial point I made. I still think the biggest killer of a brush is friction. And like, the harder you are with it on the surface, on the palette, on the miniature, like the more pressure. Kitchen paper, yeah. the water pot, yeah. like anything, like, anywhere there's contact happening yeah. with a brush. That is ultimately the thing that is going to decrease the performance or the flex of the brush head or, you know, that, that hairs might snap, et cetera. Like along with obviously those little bits of paint that get stuck halfway down down a strand of hair, et cetera. Like, and it snaps because it weakens. It's almost like a split end in, in human hair. Like it paint will get stuck to a certain fiber of hair and then it will weaken on where the paint is tight around that and it will snap off all that kind of stuff like that's part of the brush care exercise that we obviously seen in the video that we showed you um but um but yeah the, the, the amount of friction and I, that's something I'm, i always try and tell people on classes and something i really want to bring into the limelight is that friction and the, how hard you are with your brushes is actually very detrimental to them they are quite mm. they are very soft and like you're rubbing it on plastic which creates friction as we've mentioned anyway like even on the palette that's the thing, which I think is the thing that you should look at. The cleaning method that you're using, obviously the one we showed, works really well, um, and it will make your brushes factually last longer. But I think you should look at how you're actually treating them when you're painting and how hard you're being with them in the sense of pressure and friction, etc. One of the most important questions that we need to ask as well with brush care is, are you putting it in your mouth and licking it to a point? I'm guilty I mean, as for that. I am I super guilty. Everyone does it. I'm super everyone guilty. Does it. Super guilty. It's how many that. times a yeah. week are you doing that? Yeah. Is that yeah. affecting your brush quality? Are you melting your brush with your own saliva? I don't know. Are you a space marine? Like with acidic saliva? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Slightly but the brush acidic. disappears. Yeah. <laughs> it's all my hair. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that, that's something important as well. Yeah. But but that, I mean, saliva doesn't, you know, is designed to break down stuff and, you know, it's, it's not. Of, kind of a yeah. joke, James. No, it's fine. Yeah. Just one of Melting jokes, your brushes then. by sucking them. Yeah. yeah. So it's fine. Yeah. Lick them to a point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on that note, <laughs> on, that, on that note, hope that helps. Hobby hacks is our weekly. <laughs> hobby hacks is our weekly tradition on the podcast where we share a hobby hack, quick tip, recommendation with you uh, that you can implement into your hobby, especially if you're someone who likes to paint along while you listen to these episodes. Uh, James on the Patreon hangout last night, you dropped. Uh, yes, I'm book. gonna I'm gonna caveat this one because I know I'm gonna get it in the neck for it, but I'm gonna caveat because this is specifically designed. For those of you that think that Tamiya sanding foam is too soft or flexible, okay? Because there's various on, different... Let's, let's no. ground, groundwork, groundwork. We said on a previous episode, James recommended Tamiya have a sanding foam product, which mm. he likes to use to clean his miniatures. Joe on the podcast is someone who has said that he finds them too soft. They are quite fragile. They're, they're prone to sort of tearing. If you catch something like a little bit sharp, especially yeah. if you've got like a sprue joint or something if it's just a little bit pokey yeah they're prone to to tearing yeah to doing the opposite of so the main yeah. criticism that james has received in recommendation of the tamiya sanding foam mm. is oh i like this sanding foam product it instead because it's firmer yeah, yeah yeah so with that being said what you can do is because there's only one side of the tamiya sanding foam that is the abrasive side uh what you can do is you can get some double-sided tape you can stick that wait 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 hold what, on what are you suggesting? hold on hold on you can get some double-sided tape, okay? 
And you can then stick that to some very thin plastic card, okay? And then you can stick the foam onto the plastic card to give it a, a, a stiffer or firmer spine, yeah? So that it makes a much firmer bit of sponge. So then you can work it. You make yourself like an emery board, so to speak. Sure. For a split second in my tiny mind. You thought it was going to double-sided. No, no, no. Piece even of foam. worse than that. <laughs> some, some, two neurons fired together. And I thought you were going to suggest putting some double-sided sticky tape onto the plastic card and then sticking some sand to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not that reckless. Yeah, I'm not that, I'm not that reckless. That no. would be the sort of thing that James would recommend no, though, like, wouldn't it? Yeah. I try, That's a really good tip. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try make, your own, make your own emery boards. No, uh, yeah, so, so really to, to, to strengthen the, the Tamiya sanding foam and give it a more of a rigid feel in hand, yeah. you can stick some plastic card using double-sided tape to, uh, onto onto plastic card and then stick the uh, foam onto it and I've done that and it works really well I'll tell you what instead of ripping you to bits for this which would normally be on my style I'm going to try something new hmm. I'm going to calmly ask why I'm going to calmly ask this question why yep would you use yep the sanding foam for that because surely what you are doing is just recreating regular sandpaper. Well, so this was, as I said, this is why I caveated it because it was specifically tailored, specifically tailored mm -hmm. because Joe said they were too too soft or flexible. And I was like, well, you could, this, here's an idea. You could do this. Mm. So it was, it's a hobby hack. But if it's attached to something rigid, yeah. it's no longer flexible. No, which but, is the whole no, purpose plastic of the card, Plastic card, you get it in various thicknesses, as in millimeters. You yeah. can get some that's thinner and thicker. Yeah. You still have a bit, the thinner stuff, like the one mil or 0. 0.5 mil, still has flex. Yeah, so you can move it around shapes and things like that, but it's it's stiffer in its integrity than the foam, so it makes it a bit more rigid, just a bit, so you can hold it and manipulate it a bit better. Similar to paper. No, paper, paper, <laughs> no, paper's not as stiff in my opinion. The paper is just as soft. Like this, this is like just as soft. Actual as, sandpaper. As, if you buy like an actual sandpaper sheet. Yeah, but I've I've had sandpaper where I've mm. cut it before into like a little strip, and it's still it's. Still, you move it around the shape and it bends, and, and like the, so you're trying to find some sort of middle ground. Middle ground, yeah. Right, okay. yeah. Like we talk about refinement all the time. Why can't we have refinement sure. in the in the material? No, that, no, yeah, fine. Right, so fine. I'll let it go. Well, like, that's I'll let a it go. hobby hack, isn't it? That's yep. great. There you go. Yeah, we'll use that one. <laughs> <laughs> well done, James. Thank you. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that, actually, we had a little bit of a conversation about that sounding foam stuff. Mm. I'm, I've had a lot of people recommend me like alternative sanding foam product. Like, oh, I found these ones on Amazon. They come in this pack or they yeah. come this is. I find that I, I don't, I'm apprehensive for the ones that come in like big packs because they tend to be like, oh, you get loads of grits. You get like 200 grit, mm. you get 400 grit, you get 600 grit, all the way up to like 2,500 grit or whatever, which is fine. But I find that when I'm cleaning models, I'm only ever going to use 600 grit, maybe 1,000. I don't really see, because if you buy those big packs, they'll come with, loads of grits that I find probably I don't not really have any use. use for. Yeah, no, I get that. I think it's and like... Few, and fewer of the ones I actually want. Because if yeah. it comes with like two of everything, it's like, well, I'd rather have like 10 of just this one. So you know I, mean. I will interject and just say that I do understand totally what you're saying. However, for plastic, yeah, you can probably get away with a 600 or an 800 like from most of the manufacturers like Tamiya or there's another one that comes in a really good... I've forgotten what the, the brand, but it comes in... It's got loads of little compartments with like sticks. I can't remember what they're called, but... Um, I've got those and I love those as well. They're just, they're, 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 I don't need to stick hmm. plastic card to those. But, um, but, uh, <laughs> but the, when you're, when you're sanding. Dispay. Dispay, that's one. When you're, when you're, um, when you're sanding like milliput once it's dried yeah. and stuff like that, that's when you need to like then vary up the grit because like sometimes some of the, some of the softer grits just don't make any difference to it and you need a firmer one and then to polish at the end hmm. and get it super smooth like, like if you're doing that then you can use like the 1200 or the thousand well, that's part of why i avoid the like little needle files that people use because i find that just rip your model to they shreds. do yeah, yeah yeah it's like trying to clean a model of a cheese grater it's yeah. like absolutely hacking it to bits yeah i thought that all the cool kids were using you know like the hang around outside the happy shopper i thought all the cool <laughs> kids were using uh like now, now file type. Oh, I, no, use, I, use, I use emery yeah. boards. Yeah, I do yeah. use emery boards as well. Again, like ultimately, you want something that does the job, and it's irrelevant of mm. what type of tool it is. Like you know, the, we, there's loads of things that we the, use. The upside you know, of the but, of the sanding foam from Tamiya is it, yeah. because it comes in a sheet, and you cut you it cut yeah. to the, what you need. And with with emery files, I find that they're typically too big, even the small ones that are sort yeah. of tailored for yeah. scale modeling or miniature painting, or whatever. I find that they just can be too awkward. Like the I basically get the Tamiya sanding sponge sheet and I'll pre-cut 
I've just got them, like sat on my drawer. I pre-cut quite a few, and they're, they're very very small pieces, like yeah. two yeah. two centimeter squares that I'll use. And because they're soft, I can fold them in half as well. Yeah. So I find that I can get in pretty tight areas with them, which yeah. true mm-hmm. can technically with a certain file or certain emery board or whatever. But I just I, typically I just want something a bit more maneuverable. I yeah. Think. yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, but that, that, that's that's the... that being said though, if you need something fairly rigid and you need to remove quite a lot of material, for example, say you've got like a sprue joint on the bottom of a foot. And you know, I just want to make a big flat surface mm. and remove quite a lot of material. Emery board or something like that makes perfect sense. Yeah, but then what I do is then I'll go and buff it. So I'll use the emery board and then I'll use like an 800 or a 1000. Yeah. And it just yeah. to smooth it and soften mm. it to really make it like it gives it, you can, you can really polish that plastic and give it a shine. Like oh, you, yeah. you can. Oh. So I like this sandpaper talk. We can make yeah. this like a new segment. Yeah. All good. Sandpod. So. <laughs> Sandpod. <laughs> okay. Uh, on that wonderful note, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. Uh, we're going to jump over now to the Patreon bonus segment of the podcast. So if you'd like even more paint perspective in your life, consider subscribing to our Patreon linked in the description of this episode. You'll get ad-free episodes, extended episodes of the podcast, and also, of course, uh, like you're speaking about in the ads, uh, 350 plus tutorials, which are updated every single week. They're really, really high quality, really nice PDFs. They're guides on not just you know, here's how to paint this character or here's how to paint this color scheme. It's broken down. We do have our masterclass tutorials, foundation tutorials, a whole bunch of different, you know, techniques and things that you can apply into miniature painting. So it's not just here's how to paint X character that's popular this week. You'll find a lot of value in there. Um, there's tons of amazing information. Uh, so check the link in the description if you want to subscribe to that. Otherwise, we thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week. I'm not looking to just get wound up about nothing, but it's just, I don't understand it. Is it just triggered? It. It's triggered. Do you know what you need, George? A hobby holiday. I've never heard anyone say that, and that's such a good point. Sharp brush. I, I always use that brush. I, was, I even use cuss words and all sorts. <laughs> Cuss words don't move transfer. I know, I know that. I won't be doing that again. <laughs> <laughs>